temper and he would beat his dogs and his servants and uh, he would do a lot of bad things. Mm. And she didn't want to marry him, but her mom wouldn't, like, kind of, mm. was kind of forcing her to. Yeah. And her dad wasn't there to be with her, so she just kind of had to, and she was 15. Mm-hmm. So then right before they were getting married, he got um, smallpox, I think. Smallpox, mm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And when they got back, she said that he looked, well, she had to be transferred, and when they got back, she said that um, he looked hideous and he had scratches and scars all over him, his face. <laughs> and then mm. they got married. And for nine years after they got married, she spent time alone with no friends or anything like that. And she spent time reading books mm. and learning about the war and stuff like that. Because mm. she thought after the Empress died, mm -hmm. she could probably take over. Mm. instead of Peter so um, she studied even more and then I think I believe before before the Empress died she was about to have a baby and when she had her baby it was taken away for her for six weeks mm. so she and she couldn't do anything about it cause she was sick and then after that the Empress got sick and ended up dying Mm -hmm. So she would go, I forgot where, but she would go somewhere to mourn. Mm -hmm. And they had a ceremony for six weeks. Mm. And Peter did not mourn at all. He said that they shouldn't um, do anything about it and mm -hmm. wear mourning clothes or anything like mm. that. What's the Empress, uh, the Empress name? The Empress the Elizabeth. The what? Elizabeth. Okay, so that's very good. Very impressive. I'm impressed by you. You know everything. <laughs> I can even finish yeah. the chapter. Okay. No, we're gonna have somebody else to review the list. So what uh who wanna volunteer the next one? Who's good at it? Elijah. I gotta oh. grab my other Oh yeah? Oh good. Uh, okay. okay. You guys are better students these days. Everybody volunteer except you now me, now me. Just learning anything. <laughs> Terrible student. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Naomi is a word teacher. She uses take time, take her own notes. So, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Part two. It's called Catherine the Great. Mm -hmm. Uh, Peter was a very bad czar. The Russian army. It's, it's not the, the Russian mm -hmm. army hated him. A lot mm -hmm. and um, and this time Catherine was recovering from childbirth and she mm -hmm. was beginning to have plans to rebel or, and and rise up against uh, Peter mm -hmm. Peter last name is uh, you're rich, you're rich. That's where German, German uh, uh, Russian kind of names. So go ahead. And then, so the Russian army rebelled against Peter, mm -hmm. and they defeated him easily because everyone turned against him. And then Catherine was pronounced Empress. Mm -hmm. Peter, <laughs> Peter tried to uh, <coughs> rally his army. But no one served him anymore. And then Peter had just asked to go to Prussia, but Catherine did not want him to because he was afraid. Mm. He tried to gather up again and come take his kingdom back. Mm -hmm. And then Peter was murdered by someone. Mm -hmm. No one knows who. Um, no, they don't know who. You know how he He's called the Prince Barantaski. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I was thinking of a different story. Um, yeah, I know that. They said they said that it could have fight. been that Catherine could have sent someone to kill him, or that she yeah, could have had someone cut, but nobody. Yeah, did. I don't think. But they know that he got strangled. I don't think everybody liked him. Who knows what really happened? So. Mm. And then, um, so he died by what I said to be a fight with Sir Bun Kalinsky, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then Peter. Yeah, he was strangled, but then... Then what happened? Catherine was... Went on to be... 
empress for another 30 years mm -hmm. and then she brought many western ideas mm -hmm. pretty good things to russia and um what what, what are pretty good things to russia what i mean hmm. what are those things what? tell me what are those things give me an example of what mm -hmm. give me the, the good right. things what are the good things like she expanded a lot of uh Territory. Uh, yeah, Russia's mm -hmm. borders. She kind of made some better laws. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what she got her name from, Catherine the Great. She mm -hmm. did a lot of great. She got a new hospitals, if that, right? Yeah, medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She also an admirer of Hukwa, a philosopher. Of what is her name? What is his name? Walter, okay? Walter. Walter is uh, Walter. I don't know. Wal I don't know how to see this English name. What? Walter. Oh, it's Wal a Wal Wal Walter. 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 Yeah, no, we Chinese call the fur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> I know him very well, so That's I just good. don't know his English. Uh, English how to pronounce. Uh, yeah. I see. How to pronounce? I don't. I don't see the name. <laughs> it is in. Like Peter the Great, Catherine, like many of the ideas and then which that chapter, uh, that paragraph. French. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He admired the French philosopher. Voltaire. 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 Okay. Yeah, Voltaire. Yeah, Voltaire. Okay. He's one of the greatest stars of called the Enlightened Movement. Okay. So that's what it is. So she considered herself an enlightened. I'm right, not an impress. So, go ahead. So yeah, that's where the chapter kind of ends. So, what is her, her opinion of Russian Revolution? She says good thing or bad thing? Rush. Oh, she's you know anything? Where's your book? Uh, right here. Okay, you read it. Uh huh. Okay, what do you think, Rush? Uh, Catherine's idea about the, the French Revolution. She thought it was a good idea. She, she, she like it or she 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 is a uh, she is preferred or non preferred? Good question, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah she did. She question the very yeah. 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 So I ask her whether she like it or not. That's good, right? To know what really she like is a idea from European or not. Right. Then why she don't like it if she don't? Why why she like it if she, if she do? Right. So mm -hmm. to understand the person. The mind, right? So especially the one influenced, she ruled the Russian for a greater time, right? So then her opinion, her idea about those things, deciding in the days to come, the relation between Russia and Europe, right? So making some tips. So yeah. Okay. That being said, let's start the new chapter. What is it called? Chapter. Changing a changing world. Talking about, the, I think, uh, industrial revolution period. Let's look at uh, the map first. We see gonna many <laughs> uh Europe and America, right? Cross Atlantic. Okay. Wow, there's a Spain here. Man, Spain is here. France is here. No other nation. Europe is just here. Only two nation. Oh, America is here. Scotland is here. Ireland is here, England is here. Everybody have your own books? Okay, okay. Let me well, look at your, look at me, your, 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 your dad, what is that? Yeah, my friend, yeah. From, my friend from California. Oh, that's, that's a self, wow, that's very sweet. I like it. Okay, we're gonna start with reading. We're gonna take this turn to read. Is that okay for you guys? Okay, okay. go ahead. Me? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, sorry. So, steam and coal in Britain. Imagine that you were walking along a dusty dirt road between two rows of popular, po 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 hmm. sorry, po polar po polar trees. Popular trees, uh, I think. Popular, popular trees. That's actually in the Bible. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. The branches that stretch over the road are just the bud, beginning to bud, with pale green spring leaves. The bird sings high above you. The sound carried to you on a chilly morning breeze. Just ahead you just ahead of you lies an English village. The church bells ring eight clear tones. 
It's still early. It is still early in the morning, but the villagers are already hard at work. Mm -hmm. At the edge of the village, the trees open up with in two fields. Two oxen pull near the road's edge. Pull a plow. Plow. Yeah. Pull and. I've seen pull and. They pull something. The, either a card, a pole, a, a, a plow, or you. They had to pull some of these. So. Yeah, sorry about that. No, I'm teasing you guys. <laughs> Relax. Mm -hmm. Further off in the distance, you can see a single horse pulling a seed drill. Do you not know anything about the seed drill? Uh, I think a seed yeah. drill. I think mm. they might punch the holes in the ground for huh. your seeds. Oh, the poles, the bunch. They, they, they drip seed every now and then while, while cutting, um, you know, cutting up, you know, when you plow something, you're cutting a, a seed drill. Like yeah. a thing that had a bunch of spikes in it, and then either someone would walk behind dropping oh. seeds, or sometimes in those days, that so, like so, so, buckets. so, oh. plow. Okay. I know, but the plow cut lines hmm. in the dirt oh. to put seeds in. Okay, that's interesting, huh? So, this is here trying to tell you the old way of doing farming, am right? So, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Farmers walk behind their machines, keeping the animal in a straight line. Tone, wait, Stone walks close of... Wait. Stone walks close of... Walls. Walls, sorry. Stone walls close of the fields against the rough gray of the nearest wall. Two young men are shearing a flock of unhappy sheep. A pile of wool grows nearby. Three small children scurry back and forth, carrying the wool in baskets. Hmm. You hear a gentle thump, thump, thump for a cottage which sits beside the road. You peer through the window. A woman is, sits spinning wool into a heavy thread. On the other side of the room, her husband bends over a loom, weaving cloth from the wool, the wool thread. Mm -hmm. Shuttle, su shuttle thumps against the loom side each time he passes it between the threads. The fire burns on the hearth. On the hearth, beside the house, a young boy is chopping the stumps up. Each swing of axe splits another piece of firewood. Hmm. A clang, clang, clang sounds from further down the street. A blacksmith is making horseshoes, and an apprentice blows at his fire with bellow, bellow, bellows, bellows. Mm -hmm. pushing the handles. Who have ever blew a billow? I did. You did? Yeah, I think I think I yeah. It's like different kind below there is, but most uh, is a, like a skin, one. right? Yeah. So, yeah. Very Ooh. summer bakes. Ooh. We had one. Some are made of wood. We yeah. have billow all the time. We, we do good. We, I think we had a wooden billow for one Wood hour. ones. Yeah. yeah. That's my job when I was small. <laughs> Come <laughs> summer hot, am right? Oh, I had to do cooking, smoky, <laughs> burn clothes. <laughs> mm. That's what I did. That's my summer time. <laughs> bellow? Yeah. And a practice blows at the fire with billows, pushing the handles up and down and sweet sweating. 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 Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. No, you don't need to be so sorry. Despite yeah. the chill, the blacksmith swings his hammer over his head and beats his softened iron shaping iron shaping it into a crescent what well, that means he's using the metal with the heat and shaping it yeah have you heard damascus sword yep uh, i have a damascus knife yes that's because it did so many times different layers don't smile okay today's forbidden we, we need to stop now me from smiling <laughs> 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 Look at the expression. That, that's pretty sure. So <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Shaping it into a crescent. At the end of the village street, the windmill sails revolve gently in the breeze. The miller 
Inside is milling. Grindstone. Turn is minding. Is minding. Minding means pay attention to it, right? So, mm -hmm. Minding grindstones. Mm -hmm. Turn turn by the sails as the grind is the grind the village the village's wheat into flour. Into flour. flour. Let's the next person continue. Who is the next person? The next person? Okay, you're gonna cry now, so <laughs> go ahead. Uh, Muscle power makes the machines and tools in this village work. All over England, human and animal muscles produce the goods and food that Englishmen eat and use. Together, the people of, the, of a village can also harness the power of the wind. A village near a stream might be... What it means harness? Anybody explain to me what it means Take advantage of. Advantage of. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. A village near a stream might be able to use a water wheel instead. Mm -hmm. A new source of power, neither neither muscle, wind, or water, will soon change village to life. Mm. In 1769, let's write that down. That's going to be tested. 1769. Mm-hmm. You know, to measure power called the watts, right? That's where it came from. Huh? I mean, why? Right. Look at that. Mm. Go ahead. A Scotsman named James Watt perfected a machine called a steam engine. Mm -hmm. The steam engine works in a very simple way. Water is heated in a closed metal bowl called a boiler. When the bo water boils, it turns into steam. Steam tip takes up more space than water, so the steam pushes to get out of the bowl. The only way out of the bowl is through a narrow pipe called a cylinder. Cylinder! Have you heard of that somewhere? Yep. yep. Where? In a car. Cars, right? So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the cylinder isn't blocked by a circular piece of metal called piston. Pistol. Pistol. Pist 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 pistol. 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 When the steam tries to go through the cylinder, it pushes the piston up. Then the steam cools off condenses back into water, and falls back down into the oil. Mm -hmm. The piston falls back down too. This happens over and over. So the, the piston moves regularly Can you guys close the window down. there so we don't have so much noise coming in? So we got the fans look good. So. Thank you guys. All right. <laughs> The motion of the piston can be used to run machines. The steam engine had been invented a hundred years before by a French scientist and built 70 years before by an English inventor. Mm. But James Watt figured how to make the steam engine put out more power for less fuel. Now the steam could be used to run machines. Mills for grinding rain, grain, engines to pull plows and heavy loads, Bellows, water pumps, and even ships. So he just gave you a list. Just see the arrows that it was described ahead, and right? So mm -hmm. all those manpower, all, you know, natural power <coughs> are going to be replaced by this engine, and right? Engine power. Mm -hmm. so, go ahead. The steam engine changed the West just as much as ideas about liberty and equality did. Yeah. Steam could run so many more machines so much more quickly than human muscles windmills or water wheels. People grow tired, wind dies down, and drought dries up steam strings. But steam engines would run as long as they had coal. As steam engines became more popular, more and more coal was needed to feed them. But although steam engines ran machines faster than ever, coal was still mined by hand. Miners had to dig tunnels down into the ground where coal lay and chop it out by hand. Deep down on the ground, there wasn't enough air for the miners to breathe. That's just terrible life. Have you seen the miners' yeah. life? <clears throat> People are forced to do it. They, without a machine, you know? Job, without a machine. I'm sorry? It's a pretty dangerous job, too. Absolutely. They crumble you. Yeah. And when you're breathing, you're breathing in coal and like 
rips yeah. your lungs apart. Yeah, there's no air, there's no light. You dig yeah, into I think the... that's when they came up with the candle, how they would send the candle down. And if it went out, that means they couldn't It go means down. there's no air or stuff like that. Yeah. Man, that's terrible. Yeah. yeah. No, oh, she's gone. She's <laughs> like, in the middle of reading, <laughs> Esther. Suspended. Okay, you can't finish. <laughs> she evidently okay. didn't want to read. So, so we're we, uh, Minor dick turtles. She's back. She's back. Sorry, my thought was dry. Where do you, where do you <laughs> win? Do you excuse yourself in before you leave. I'm just like... Well, you guys are talking. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <coughs> Miners hang to dig turtles down into the ground. Uh, the miners tried to let air into the tunnels through the trap doors, mm. but they still might stumble into airless pockets of the mine and suffocate before, <clears throat> before they could get out. The miners called this lack of air choke damp. What? Choke damp. That's, that's, that's a word, difficult word, huh? Yeah, that's Never right. heard of that one before. Choke now? Yeah. yeah. Choke now. We don't want to be there. Yeah. Even worse than choke down was fire damp. What? Fire damp. Coal puts out gas called methane. 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 <laughs> methane. methane. When methane built up in corners of coal mines, it so beside coal can produce it. What else can produce it? Uh, there's stuff and like oh. gas, yeah, gasoline uh, that does it. Uh, yeah. A little bit of methane. Yeah. The gas inside the coal. Yeah. Well, that's actually, human waste grass when you burn it on begin to begin to to oh, erode, right. and it actually produce methane. It's also it lead up. It's also yeah. why in like ponds, some ponds you can like let it yeah, on fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. Ponds and yeah. stuff. Do you see certain things get bubble up, am I so you mm -hmm. know? Don't necessarily smell good, but it's <laughs> it can lead it up. My right? fans are in farts too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is called the recycling process. It can yeah. produce energy. The things that can be fed into the field to increase productivity of the, the the soil, and then soil produce produce again. You know, grass, whatever. You know, food again turn to be you know the material for this is a whole recycling process. So. Mm -hmm. Mm. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. It would explode with a little mm. bang. Mm -hmm. But the little bang would fill the air with coal dust, which acted like gunpowder and exploded again in a huge shattering blast that killed miners and collapsed tunnels. Well. Miners could be killed by suffocation, explosions, or tunnel collapse. But even those who survived often died later from a disease called black lung. Black lung, that is terrible. Right. Huh? Well, there's, there's. I wonder. I wonder if some people. I don't know. That probably has nothing to do with it. But in the war, in World War Two, they used gas masks. I wonder if that would work down under the ground if they used that. I wonder if that would help at all because of the gas. I don't know. Who can wear that thing to work every day? Yeah. <laughs> That's like tough. That reminds a huge thing. Okay. <laughs> like alien invasion. Hey, Michael, well, true. But <laughs> I wonder if that would have worked. I think. I think more than days they have a way to purify the air. So I in those days they really don't have a lot of equipment, you know. So mm -hmm. this this contest the description here tried to tell you whole industry revolution started with a terrible condition, right? So which it was try a lot of people into were terrible situation lives. So yeah, you know the American progressive movement started with the journalists begin to report on certain things one well, of the conditions the slums of people the miners actually you know so doing mining you know, loss on your university so their so their life is terrible basically, you know so it's it's like living so terrible that the the people of the day said that's just just terrible you know so you can't you can't even imagine how worse it is so they they wrote some uh, called expose in those days, expose the situation. 
so the people said we better change the situation you know better better not let us call the, the, the gap of a social social standing and right rich and the poor so those are jp morgan things okay rock forwarders that is so anyway so go ahead i might might move too forward okay that's about 50 years later is the same time go ahead yeah oh. mm. After years of breathing coal dust into their lungs, miners couldn't breathe properly anymore. They died when their lungs could no longer pull in enough oxygen to keep them alive. Mm -hmm. Miners used to sing, I used to be a drillman till I got the best of it. And now I've eaten so much dust that, the, that it's a killing me. <laughs> it's a killing me. Yeah, I'm saying it. Women and children breathed coal dust too. Women pulled loads of coal out of the tunnels while the men worked. Children sat down in the pitch black of the mine, opening and closing the trapdoors that helped air move through the night. I have to trap without a light, one little girl, only eight, explained. I'm scared, so sometimes I sing. Coal miners hauled coal out of the mines for the steam engines, but then the coal had to be carried to the machines. Tons of coal were floated down England's rivers on barges. But what a about machines that weren't near the water. The answer, railroads. Hmm. A steam engine hooked to the train would burn coal to keep itself running. But by using a little bit of coal, it could pull, pull tons more all the way across the country. As steam engines grew more and more popular, railroads were built across more and more land. Farmers objected to the railroads. All that noise will keep our cows from giving milk, they complained. The chickens will stop laying eggs. The crops will work. Crops. What? You say crops. <laughs> said crops. What does the wheels mean? I have no mm -hmm. idea. Well, it just like, means like that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But railroad, railroad builders ignored these objections. Mm -hmm. Soon, coal trains were joined by passenger trains. Steam engines could take people from place to place much faster than horses and carriages. Millions of people began to use trains and travel farther and farther away from home. Steam power was beginning to change life in England, and soon this change would spread across Europe and over to North America. This is called rocket. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the rocket. That's good. Let's continue then. Now we're going to be talking about cotton, cotton and guns. Okay. Guns. That's some good topic, huh? Yeah. <laughs> in America, <laughs> the other side is uh, in Britain, so this is in America. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> cotton and guns in America. Steam ran, well, steam ran pumps and bellows, ships and trains. Over in America, it would soon run a new kind of machine, the cotton gin. The cotton gin. What that is? I had no I idea. idea. Cotton gin. Cotton gin. It explains Jane. later in the chapter. It is? Okay. Wow, okay. The warm, damp fields of the southern United States were perfect for cotton plants. Thread mm -hmm. spun from cotton was used all over the world. Plantation owners could grow huge, healthy cotton plants covered with valuable cotton bales. When the cotton fields were ready to harvest, slaves and hired men were moving along the rows, plucking the fl fluffy cotton balls and dropping them into huge sacks. Have anybody pick out cotton balls? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Not, not like wild. Not like actual cotton. Yeah, one. my favorite cotton. Not real ones. We have real ones. Even like cotton from trees and stuff. Like real that. ones. Probably not like that stuff with the brown at the bottom. You <laughs> in the field? Okay. As for that. <laughs> hey guys, pay attention, okay? Sorry. Good. Yeah. Go ahead. Um. Mm -hmm. But the cotton balls were weren't soft and smooth like the ones you can grow by a dressing mm -hmm. down. Mm okay. So they're, oh yeah, okay. they were filled with seeds, and the seeds were covered with little hooks, like sharp pieces of vel velvet. What that is? Um, it's like, well, you know those, they, uh, 
But then they like to connect it. together, like some shoes like, have it, like or, like come apart, like. Oh, okay, okay. I don't really okay. understand what it is. Okay. Before the cotton could be used, all of the seeds had to be pulled out of the cotton balls one at a time. One slave could work all day and only clean the seeds out of a single pound of cotton. A college boy from Massachusetts named Eli Whitney. <laughs> I remember listening. He used to call Elijah that all the time. Oh, oh you guys call Elijah, Eli, Eli. <laughs> we, we, we used to call him that. Okay. Eli Whitney came south. So we're gonna call you Eli from today. No, no, yeah. I don't yeah. like being yeah. called Eli. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it would call it Eli. <laughs> <laughs> Eli. Eli. Yeah. Let's yeah. yeah. see. After the American I obviously Revolution. like the name very much. So. <laughs> Eli. Go ahead. After the American Revolution, and set up his workshop in the plantation. Eli liked machines. He liked solving problems. He watched the slaves struggle to pull the clean hook seeds out of cotton blossoms. There must be a better way to do that, Eli Whitney thought. And he started to <laughs> I'm sorry. And he started to experiment with different kinds of rollers and blades. Rollers and blades. No one knows exactly how Eli Whitney <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> Solve the problem. So everything you need to see in the sound and dance on the hall. So uh, you you need to see or dance. Maybe you can more concentrate, <laughs> not read. It's just the name. Kind of okay. Everything. But according to the story told afterward, Eli was sitting on the back porch of a nearby plantation, ideally watching chickens in a wire thing. Idolly. I dolly. I dolly. Ideally. No oh, idea. I don't have any idea. Yeah, I totally lost it. Yeah. Anyway, just to so chill. Cat. It's a day <laughs> learn to be chill. It's hard to say. Mm -hmm. A cat sat next to the pen, watching the chickens and hoping to make a meal of one of them. When a careless chicken wandered over the cage uh, to the edge of the pen, the cat pushed his paw through the wire and extended its claws. The claws scraped the chicken and pulled its feathers right off. Huh. Chicken ran off squawking with a patch of bare skin. The cat stalked off with nothing but feathers. But Whitney had his idea. Hold on there. Do you guys remember another inven invention or another story similar? Do you call anything scientific or historical happen? Like similar, like watching some suddenly, like aha moment. Oh, like an apple falling on his head? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's Newton, right? Okay. Sir Newton. As a Newton got the idea of gravity, mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> he went back to his workshop and built a metal roller with teeth that rubbed up against a metal grill. The roller, turned by a handle, pulled up cotton and scraped it across the grill. The, grill. the seeds dropped away. Now a slave who could turn who turned the handle off this new machine called it a cotton gin. A cotton gin, okay. Gin or, oh, gin. Gin, right? Is that a gin? Yeah, cotton. Okay. That's why later on they have a gin, I believe. Something to do with the cotton. Gin was definitely already created. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so did you read this books already? Yeah, read I read all, every chapter before and highlight all my notes so then I can just write them down. Wow, that's oh, wow. interesting. A different process than yours. Very different. <laughs> yeah, like I was. I used to read ahead just uh, oh, really? books. <laughs> yeah, something I want interested to learn. That I really want the literature uh, to learn from the teacher I had to say, or to read ahead mm -hmm. called the preview. So then when the teacher teach it, you can literally hear more the thing he want to talk about, expound about, you know, so. Sure. More effective way of learning because now uh, then after that you pretty much get spared a lot of trouble doing has to do review mm -hmm. so different yeah, way of learning and right that so might be better. yeah exactly preview on time you know so then review if you go through this process is mm -hmm. the subject you really feel you want interest and want to memorize. That's the way how yeah, well, I do. Yeah, it's easier for me because then I can just yeah, write it all down. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It is kind of hard to like take notes after like yeah. you read it too, so I might yes, do that. Yes, yeah, I mean, you know, when you first encounter information, especially under a certain regime, 
regime discipline or time frame. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. It I just, think yeah, it's very hard for you to jungle around new thoughts. Right. Somebody talking, taking notes. But, I mean, even yeah. when you're reading, you know where those important parts are, so you can always go back and read. Exactly, exactly. I feel like exactly. When I'm learning stuff. I have to yeah. read it multiple times. So yeah, I'm method really, like, method learning is a, is a very interesting thing, and right? right. So. After you do design things, sometimes you just think doesn't come together. You suddenly change the method, how to organize things. Things are getting, oh, things are much easier, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so is how to, how to learn to learn in terms of how to use your your memory, right? The power of the brain, sense how yeah. to use it, because it's own processing. So it's not the same. So, yeah, mm -hmm. well. I want you to guys to pay attention to things we're talking about, okay? Not distracted. It's very important to learn to concentrate your mind. If a person continuing in the class setting distracted, is a very unproductive model for himself, it disturbs everybody. Mm -hmm. So that person is in wide discipline from me, okay? So I can't let that have that happen because it disturbs everybody. Mm -hmm. It allows to get joke, but what you did to engage in, what have you, and the student is engaging continually that students not want to learn, then the class literally just lowers the standard to give way to ways not engaging. You don't want the life to be like that when you're a parent or a teacher or a manager. That means the things you're doing is not being effectively carried out. And you don't want to do that with your own life because that's a waste of life. I'd rather spend that time to really pay attention to the thing I'm doing I can kick back ready to well, not worry about it, right? So most of the people just they spend their life disorganized. So they try to make, make always living under. You know, the Bible talking to live as a head, leave, leave your life as a head rather than the tail, being dragged by your situation, dragged by the need. Continue you just literally don't know what you're doing, disorganized, continue to scattered. I don't know why my life turned this way, my emotion went this way, my relation went a certain way. It's a purely a way how to organize your life. And one of the things that I see, Elijah has hugely improved his life in the beginning. And no one is with me as well. In the beginning, they can't pay attention to five minutes. You know, so it's like their mind is wandering, right? You would think, they would think, that's just me, I mean, can't help it, right? So that's not true, you know? So after a period of time, we stay together, certain discipline you wanted. Beijing, are you on the speaking to you? I'm talking to you yeah. right now. The mind is able to concentrate. Mind not the one around. Mind begin to hear people. Now, why are you doing that? The, the, the good things begin to happen. First, your time is more efficient to spend. The second thing, if somebody is talking to you or studying something with you, you don't pay attention to it, do you think it's productive for everybody or with the other lives? So in long term, it's like, it's like you are not merely yourself have problems. Your relationship, your work with others are going to have problems because you don't concentrate what the people need to concentrate. You can't coordinate with them. You can't cooperate with them. You can't be an effective team member. Then with that, you can be effect team member. Can you do leading? You can never lead because you can never be trustworthy, possibly whatever the word. You know, you effectively to carry out the task. Your standard is very low for yourself. You don't have a way to even carry out in effective ways. Am right? So, so your life continuing being a tail. You can never assume leadership or important positions things equally a uh, situation like really chaotic everybody frenzy everybody confused you are literally add more to the fire rather than be a solution right so is that god want us to do our life to be like that going to a difficult situation we just panic frenzy throw our hands in, in heaven said i don't know anything about it i don't know what to do with it you know so rather said okay this is my moment this even it's troublesome it's it's crisis it's a challenging but i maybe uh, with me world i can make bring some clarity by it, bring some peace 
bring some order by some solution to it. Now, where to start? Start in the day of small things. In the day of small things. He likes to lay hands on ben, uh, Benjin to pray for him. Lay hands on his mind, actually. You uh, like Noah, Noah come around to pray for Benji. You young people, as you stay with me for a while, your mind will be changed. Naturally, be discipline changed. And it started with such conversations, Benji. It's a conversation everybody goes through with me. I'm going to discipline the little thing, but this, the little thing is not little. Right? Mm -hmm. Not little. The other example I tell people. If somebody wants to make friends with me, you see, you can't you can help without looking at other places. Right. Why? I'm talking to you. Yeah. That's disrespectful in long terms. That's unproductive for your mind. But you don't want to do that, am I? Mm -hmm. At all. Yeah. Am I? You don't want to do it. it it's a habit. Mm -hmm. It's a habit of things. Yeah. It's also a, a, a thing that it, a condition that leave you already in confidence in order your mind. You worry about things too much. Mm -hmm. And those things, you have to start okay, engaging things, productive with it, step by step, solid. So that don't need to worry about it. Because you're more confident, you're more productive with things. You don't need to worry about things, you step by step, build self confidence, build excellency, and you're more and more able to handle yourself. In any situations, with a sense of composure, with a sense of uh, confidence, you also uh, have be a solution and encouragement to everybody. When you show up, leadership comes, order comes, confidence comes, am right? Nobody panic anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> a certain general, you know, he's so friends, so you don't know what to do, you know, so every soldier is running around, I don't know what to do, right? A certain general, so chaotic, come around, he just make a speech, make a talk, all the soldiers suddenly become say, let's let's fight a good fellow, let's organize ourselves, right? So right. one well, two speech, this is a different person. And the leadership changed the day. Literally, one person changed the day. I'm not trying to teach you a hero, but the time of the certain people have such an impact over a group of people when the need the, the situation demanded, am I? Mm -hmm. Can be general every day, <laughs> every moment, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, at least prepare your heart when you're young, when those things come upon your life, family, community. If you're in a war, a campaign, you go there, you're not panic, you don't feel prepared in your, in your inside of you. Said, you know, you know, that's my point. I'm able to make a difference. Um, it started with the very small things, very small things. And you, we expect good things to happen. How did it happen? It happened with the, the day of small things. The day of small beginnings. Go ahead. You, uh, uh, the you run or you pray. Lay hands on his forehead. <coughs> Lord, I do pray that you would bless our brother Benji, Lord, as he is, Lord, beginning to see, Lord, and understand, Lord, Lord, the true ways of your life, Lord, and the true ways of being a son in your kingdom, Lord, not only that, but, Lord, things just in daily life, Lord, and teaching time, Lord, and listening, Lord, and learning, Lord, I pray that you would lift him up and enlighten his heart, Lord, and this time, Lord, that you would take this Discipline, Lord, not as something to look down on, Lord, but something to look up on, Lord, as he is learning, Lord, and growing with us, Lord, with you. So I pray that you would bless his heart and mind, Lord, and all that he does, mm. Lord, and that you would to begin to really hear your voice mm. and understand you, Lord, express mm. your name. Mm. Yeah. This kind of lessons in life is more important than the than many history books, right? Just telling you. <laughs> so, all right, so go ahead. No one to bless, bless your brother. Yeah. Lay hands on him. Your mind will be changed. More than just talking, you literally, your mind will change. 
There's a power in the spirit, there's a power in the realm than beyond our rational thinking to at least on the the forehand. Pray for his head. Yes, Lord, I do lift Benji up to you. Lord, I thank you for his heart and his life. Lord, the work that you have already begun to do, Lord, in his heart and his mind. Um, I do pray that this grace, Lord, that you are pouring forth upon him through these these times of instruction and teaching, Lord, of life wisdom, Lord, would truly begin to manifest in and through his life, Lord, and extend even into his family, Lord, that it would bring about a, a new way of life, Lord, to be practiced in their midst. So, Lord, I, I do ask that it would be, Lord, a, an encouraging process for them, Lord, a life-giving process for them. Or something that truly renews their and clarifies their vision of you and your kingdom and purpose. Mm -hmm. So Lord, I do pray these blessings upon Benji, Lord, that he would indeed uh, not only be, but even desire to be, Lord, a light unto others, mm -hmm. Lord, to, to see beyond his own life, Lord, to see into the lives of others, Lord, you have already placed within him a caring heart, so Lord, I pray that you would confirm these things and strengthen them. Mm -hmm. I pray this in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Sorry to, to get aside a little bit, so please be seated. Yeah. Where we were? Uh, we were at Cotton Gin. Cotton Gin there? Okay. Ooh. Continue a little bit. Uh, actually, let the basic read from there. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, where am I? You're at the Cotton Gin. Okay. Could clean 15 or 20 pounds of cotton per day. Mm -hmm. A plantation owner, owner who lived near a pounds, or not a stream, mm -hmm. could hook the cotton gin to water to a, a water wheel and clean thousands of pounds of cotton per day. A steam engine could clean the cotton even faster mm -hmm. with the help of the cotton gin. Cotton grower growers could make more money than they ever dreamed. Mm -hmm. Plantation owners planted larger fields and bought more slaves. Mm -hmm. In the years to come, cotton would become the biggest industry of the South and increase slavery in hundred. A hundredfold. Mm. Whitney wasn't finished in inventing. He wanted to solve another problem too. Oh, that's why many people with uh, last names are Whitney. I'm talking. <laughs> 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 Have you guys uh, uh, heard of the singer called the Houston Whitney? Uh, oh Houston. man, she's oh. such a beautiful singer. Like it's Whitney Houston. Well, <laughs> 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 sorry. Yeah, she has a very nice voice. But, uh, but there you go, Whitney. I'm right. Her name yep. is Whitney. Yes. So. Yeah. As, as there is a mountain Whitney as well, you know that? What? Mount Whitney. Mountain Whitney. Mount Whitney. Mount Whitney. General Sherman, Mount Whitney. Huh. You guys went to General, uh, General Sherman. The, uh, the, as the, a the, tree. The tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, we did? It's the biggest tree in the world. Yeah. It locked up in the snow. Uh, that's, that's Mount Whitney. Huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. This problem had nothing to do with the cotton. The United, the United States government wanted the United States Army to have better guns. Guns were made by hand, one at a time. The parts of each gun fit only the gun, only the gun, no other. If a trigger broke or a barrel twisted, the soldier who owned the gun would have to take it to a gunsmith and wait for a new part to be made. Ah, that is a... Mass production yeah. come on board, all right? Yeah. Before yeah. Ford used to, the same principle to produce cars, all right? Oh, so, wow. okay. yeah, standardized things, you know? So, mm. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Eli Whitney wondered why weren't guns designed so that every gun had the same size barrel, the same size trigger, uh, and the same size. Boy, boy, and boy, and boy, and do you do you know what a boy and means? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. I think it's a part it? to the gun. Bayonet. Bayonet. Yeah. Bayonet, oh, is bayonet. A, it's a knife. Oh, yeah, this is yeah, something on top of the gun. Remember that? The knife. Yeah. It's not a gun. Mm -hmm. oh, I it was a bayonet's not a. A bayonet is a knife. Could attach oh, to the top of the gun. Oh, I thought like a sword, making like sword knife. Spear. Yeah. 
Most bayonets were able to be taken off and used as a fighting weapon as well. Some, exactly. Some were connected where you can do that, but... Yeah. Very interesting concept, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he can make a hundred barrels, a hundred triggers, and a hundred firing pins. If part of a gun broke, if a, if a part of a gun broke, the soldier could just grab a replacement part and put it in. Mm -hmm. This probably seems like a plain old common sense to you. Today, we're, using to ha we're, we're used to having parts that fit the same in any machine. Mm. Often I encourage um, this, this gentleman, I said, learn one thing, you can learn three, right? So, right. same That's principle, <laughs> yeah, same principle, you can do it. You know, how you print this book, think about it. Yes, people have to do handwriting all the time, right? Right. Yeah. Had to hire the scribes. You know, all day long just copy books, right? Yeah. And you never know it's right or wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody has to go through the same process. Some of them do it. Well, if right or wrong, you have to do, redo it again, right? Mm -hmm. So what a waste of life and paper, yeah. everything, yeah. right? <laughs> well, suddenly somebody said, you know what? Why we don't copy it? Put it in the, in the design, a, a imprint, right? Like, like a print, right? Mm -hmm. As a print press, we call it press because it's pressed down. Mm -hmm. It produces the same result all the time you only need to end it one time make sure it is good but then you don't need to write it again you print it the same thing am right mm -hmm. so then people say because you know you have inscribe if you inscribe one book you can only do one book inscribe the same print and go on okay print the thousand books with the same print model or mode whatever mm -hmm. but it's like oh you know each each, each word is the same alphabet, am I? Right. I don't need to inscribe everything on one plate. I just need to change the alphabet and make it the same composition, am I? So, and then I don't need to every time to make it the mode anymore. And you think about this step revolutionized the printing business, am I? So, you know, in the Middle Ages, people don't have books. Why they don't have books? Because nobody can really take this time to really copy a book, right? Where the source of the book is. So then with the printing press going on, they revolutionized the way how people communicate. Especially the Bible used to be nobody can have a Bible. Why is not have that? It's so expensive, you know? So it's impossible to get a copy. So then printing business. And that is taken once by Martin Luther King, uh, Martin Luther's time. Because people began to print things. The founding fathers of the nation, some had literally started with printing businesses. Then they step into the writing business and step into learning things business. Take an example, is a Benjamin, what is that name? Benji, what is his name? Uh, Benjamin no. Franklin. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, frankly, am I? So, yeah. Uh, he started it, uh, he started 15 years old. Become a, his first apprentice, his brother, then become partnership, his brother, started a prince. Then, because of that, he went to England, started being an apprentice. He learned the modern day as a prince, he come back, he started writing, you know, so, and he become a very, very instrumental in the founding of this nation you know so we just read this book the person names wrote the book called the common sense you know what common sense who is author who authored it uh i think it was thomas Paine. thomas Paine. you know thomas Paine where he came from is a native american green american mm -hmm. no he's no, not no, even no, american no, citizen no, he's not yeah that. I know we learned about him. Yes. School. Do you know why he wrote that book? It was because I don't remember exactly why, but yeah. it was. Yeah. It was commissioned, hired by Benjamin Franklin. How they get to know each other? Because of printing business. You know, they have this same circle of people, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> to know all the writers, to know the article. And that's a major way, like today's internet. Mm -hmm. Because they do a newspaper, pathlet newspapers that's revolutionizing those societies of society those days you know so yeah. i think about the power when i grew up i don't know you guys age but it, we don't have an asset <laughs> you kidding me <laughs> no so a computer is, is my already you know so 
I remember the days I had this gentleman have a, a handset, you know, I was like, right on it. What? You know, so um, that's about 10 years ago. Yeah. Life changed, right? Everything yeah, yeah, changed. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, finish that. Okay. New light bulb will fit into any lamp or ceiling light in your house. Well, what do you care for, Elijah? Oh, no, no, no. Somebody. Oh, you're already reading. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, we're almost finished. <laughs> finish. <laughs> If you have a special pe have a pencil sharpener in your house, you can buy pencils in any city, and they'll fit into the sharpener. Mm. If you buy any roll of toilet paper from any grocery store, it will fit into your own toilet stand. Standardization! <laughs> it's a very important word. Yeah. Standardization. S standard, stand, stand, uh, standardization. 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 Yeah. yeah. So, Let's see what the major difference between British, you guys driver, what the difference British cars and American cars? Different side driving. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and others, you use money all the time, what the difference? Money is a different currency. <laughs> yeah, it's a currency. Am I right? Different yeah. measurement, am I right? Somebody yeah. defend some of the inch, say that, meter. Huh? Standardization. Wait, wasn't like uh, in Canada things were cheaper or more expensive? Cheaper. They're cheaper. Depends. Actually, never mind. Depends. Depends. Yeah, they were more expensive. Depends. Depends. I think it's more expensive. Yeah, they were more expensive. In Spain, everything is cents. Like, oh, like yeah. everything yeah. is depends. That's cool. Yes. Spanish people have five meals a day, I heard. Uh, yeah. Five? Yeah, right? Five yeah. Meals. Tell us about it. Yeah. So they have breakfast and yeah. they have like a middle, middle lunch mm, thing, okay. like at 11 ish, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they have like lunch at 2. At 2, and after, they have, after they had a. After they had their little yeah. coffee. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then uh, <laughs> at like 9 mm. at night, they have dinner. And oh. then at like around 11 30, they have a little snack. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. That's See? very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a serious life, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely different. No wonder people don't think. That's <laughs> okay, let's see. That is very interesting life. Yeah. See, people okay. taking nap as official. Even the government taking naps. The stop stop office hour taking nap. Alright? Alright? Yeah. All right? yeah. 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 It is official. <laughs> yeah. It's official today. Yeah, official thing. I call it not a standardization, it's called a custom of a culture, tradition. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Standard stand standard. Standardization. Yes. Yeah. It means that parts are in an interchangeable. Interchangeable. A light bulb from a general electric can be interchanged with a light bulb made by another company. Both will work. But back in 1797, standard standardization was a brand new idea. Eli Whitney had to show a group of American government of officials a whole stack of his new gun parts and in, invite them to put together a gun. Using any of the parts the officials introduced, including Thomas Jefferson, chose their parts and started to fit them together. All of the parts snapped into place. Mm -hmm. The officials, the officials were delighted. They told Whitney to build a gun factory, which would make guns for the whole United States Army. That's quickly being popularized everywhere, become an industry. So. Mm -hmm. Eli Whitney claimed that his system of interchangeable parts was unknown, un unknown in Europe. Mm. Soon, this this way of um, making parts was called the American system. Actually, a French inventor had already thought of this, but it was Whitney's factory that sort that became famous. Soon interchangeable parts were used for all sorts of goods, clocks, farm machinery, and cotton gins. The idea of in interchangeable parts would soon help factories to spread across North America. Just as cotton fields were spreading in the South, in the south, like steam power, when these two inventions would help to change everyday life forever. Is that amazing? 